Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. I got this email from Peter Jeffries, subject line, Red Heifer Update. And he says, hey Jared, I found this article posted a couple weeks ago about the Red Heifer. I'm not sure if it's members of the Temple Institute that are referred to in the article or just a group of very religious Jews, but it's clear they're good. They're getting things ready. And uh, yeah, they are. Thank you for the email, Peter. So this is the article that uh, he gave us a link for. This is Middle East Eye. Israelis practice red heifer ritual in front of Al-Aqsa Mosque. And of course, you see the Dome of the Rock back there, which is not Al-Aqsa, but it's, you know, you have Al-Aqsa Mosque and then you have the Dome of the Rock. So this is pretty close. Uh, you can see it pretty well back there. And, um, you know, this is not... <laughs> This is not a red heifer. Um, this is a Hereford. Uh, the the red heifers are actually red Angus uh, heifers. So it's a different type of cow that they have depicted here. In fact, this isn't even a heifer. It's a it's a bull if you know what you're looking for. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, and you can you can tell it's not a real it's not a real cow. It's like a it's like a cutout or something like that. Um, but yes, it is it is the Temple Institute. I know that because I rec I recognize Rabbi uh, Ar uh, Zaria Ariel right here. Uh, if you go to the Temple Institute website, he's the head of the research department for the Temple Institute. Uh, he's been interviewed by Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz. He was a a writer or a journalist for Israel three sixty five. Uh, you may want to watch uh, this interview. Unfortunately, it's it's. A, Except for the very first part, it's all in Hebrew because that's all that he speaks. But uh, this is a good interview. And then I would encourage you, in case you're new to this whole thing about the red heifers or if you haven't really been following what I've been covering on the channel, uh, I would encourage you to watch this video where I interview Adam uh, because <clears throat> there have been so many misconceptions and just sometimes I think just flat out lies about the red heifers and what's supposed to happen, what it's supposed to look like and Adam is in contact with the people that are actually doing this. And I asked him all the questions. Maybe there's some more questions I'll come up with later, but he clarified a lot of things about the red heifers. Okay. Now, as far as this being an update, um, I think the most recent update, I think was this. Yeah, this was just 13 days ago. The temple Institute put out this video called the temple Institute building the Holy temple. Uh, and in a section of this video, they talk about the red heifers so the most recent updates are, based on this video, is that they're still trying to figure out, I guess, exactly where on the Mount of Olives they're going to do it. Although I have noted that they do have the land, like they have the parcel of land. I think that they're just trying to figure out exactly where on that parcel of land it's supposed to be done because it's supposed to be done within sight of the Holy of Holies. Like if you were to on the Mount of Olives and looking straight through the, the doors and the gates, you, you're supposed to be able to look into the, or at the Holy of Holies. So I think there's debate about that. And then also uh, there's this whole issue of, of finding a Kohen or a priest who is a descendant of Aaron, you know, the Kohenim, the priests uh, that is uh, ritually pure enough to do it. And they, they found a young man. Uh, he looked like he was like a teenager. And it, I don't I don't know if he's accepted the call to do this. So I, it, it, the way that this video made it seem is like they still have that problem. They haven't found a, a priest yet. That may be the one thing really that's holding this up. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, so this is a new this is a new development. And I haven't seen this before. Israelis practice red heifer ritual in front of Al-Aqsa Mosque. And uh, I'm keeping track of these things. I have this spreadsheet called Judaism Temple Preparation. Uh, and I'm just noting every single time I see anything, uh, no matter how small, that seems to be like a preparation uh, for the third temple. They're, they're really serious about it. You have the Temple Institute. They've recreated all the vessels and clothing for the temple. And they, they've done a lot of reenactments. I have a whole list of things here. A lot of these are reenactments. Um, that's kind of like a regular thing. But what I haven't seen so far is a red heifer reenactment. So I, f I feel, unless I find out more, I feel like this is a pretty interesting development and uh, a sign that it is getting that much closer. 
Uh, before we continue, I want to give you the update on the Flood the Earth Challenge. So uh, we're at 9,914 copies of the Book of Mormon that, is, that have been shared so far. We're trying to get to 10,000. So now we're within 100. Uh, every 100 Book of Mormon or copies of the Book of Mormon shared is a milestone, and I color it with, with this blue color um, on the spreadsheet. So we hit the next milestone. We, we crossed over the 9,900 uh, Book of Mormon mark. <laughs> Uh, we also hit the next milestone for people that have joined the challenge. We're at 1,152 people that have joined the challenge. And uh, for this, I do it every 50, and then I'll color it purple. So we're making really good progress. Please keep it up. If you haven't done it already, share a copy of the Book of Mormon, either digital with the Book of Mormon app or a physical copy. Let me know in the comments or send me an email and make sure to include hashtag flood. And then I keep track of it. Uh, I'll, I'll, the goal is to try to share at least 10, but you can go well beyond that. Do as many as you can, right? Pray about it. Do it in appropriate ways. Don't be like a nuisance, but um, just let me know and I'll keep track of how many you've shared and I'll update you every time you, you uh, update me. Okay, so let's read a little bit about this. Uh, a group of religious Israelis have been pictured practicing the ritual of the red heifer which is meant to be which is meant to herald the building of a new Jewish temple on the site of Al-Aqsa Mosque. According to Jewish tradition, the ashes of a perfectly red heifer cow are needed for the ritual purification that would allow a third temple to be built in Jerusalem. Well, let me just say, uh, from what I understand from Adam and Rabbi Gerfein and others that I've spoken to, it's not so much it's necessary for building the temple. It's not even necessary for some of the some of the sacrifices that are done in the temple. But there are certain um, ceremonies, rites, sacrifices that cannot be done unless you have the ashes of the red heifer because the ashes are necessary to purify uh, the kohanim, the priests, as well as the Levites, as well as Jews going up to the temple mount. So, So yeah, this is kind of like... Uh, like the one really big thing that's holding that up on top of the fact that you have the Muslim presence on the Temple Mount. They have the Dome of the Rock, Al-Aqsa Mosque, and they have um, control over it. They, they administer the Temple Mount as of right now. Okay, so, um, but yeah, it's a big deal getting the, the ashes of the red heifer. If you're new, the reason why is because they've had a hard time finding a ritually pure kosher red heifer that's completely red. It's very difficult to do, but they finally done it. And, uh, according to Jewish tradition, this would be only the 10th time in history that there's been a red heifer. Now that's according to Jewish tradition, but this would be the 10th and it's supposed to be the one that really, uh, once the third temple is built and you have the red heifers and everything, it's supposed to herald in the Messiah. So in this way, I think the Jews are being prepared for the second coming. As they expect Messiah with all these, all these signs that I've taken note of, uh, not this spreadsheet. I have another another spreadsheet that are like for signs that are Jewish specific. As all these things happen, they're I think they're being prepared for the second coming. Okay. Uh, quote: Temple worshippers are now practicing the mitzvah, religious duty, or I would say commandment. Uh, that's another way you could think of it. The commandment of a red cow in front of the temple mount, which will enable the return of purity in the observance of all the temple mitzvahs or commandments. Uh, posted journalist Yanan Magal on Tuesday, along with a picture of activists from the Temple Institute. And uh, I have that. So here's like a like a bigger picture. And yep, definitely a, cu definitely a cutout of a Hereford bull um, or steer. I don't know if he's been steered. Um, I think this, this guy right here, I think this is actually the, uh, I recognize his face. I think he's actually the head of the Temple Institute. If we go back here, scroll up, I believe that is Rabbi Yisrael Ariel. It looks like him to me. Get, get, get a look at him. I know it's kind of a small picture. I think that's who that is. And I've seen this guy too. He went to the Red Heifer Conference and I think he's like a, a rancher, like an Israeli rancher, but I know I've seen this guy too before. Okay, continuing. In 2022, five red heifers arrived in Israel from a, from a Texas ranch and are now kept in the archaeological park next to Shiloh or Shiloh. 
uh, in, in illegal, well, quote unquote, in illegal uh, Israeli settlement near the Palestinian city of Nablus. Um, yeah, by the way, at this point, they are all of age. I had a separate spreadsheet that was tracking the, the their potential ages because they weren't very specific in any of these articles or videos. But they would mention like, oh, they're now, you know, this many months old or whatever. And there were different like, anyway, the, I tracked it all. They're all of age at this point. So age is not an issue. All right, continuing. Their eventual slaughter on the Mount of Olives will, according to advocates, allow Jewish people to be purified so they can perform rites and worship on the site of Al-Aqsa Mosque. Research by a professor at Bar Ilan University uh, estimated that the ashes of one cow could be made into enough cleansing water for 660 billion purifications. So I, I think I think once this happens, I think the Jews will be good for a while. Uh, that's quite a bit. 60, 660 billion. Yeah, that's a lot. The cow being practiced upon in Magal's image uh, does not appear to does not appear to be one of the five red heifers from Shiloh. Rather, it seems to be a cutout. You mean this doesn't appear to be a real? <laughs> you mean that's not actually a cow like standing on this wall, <laughs> perfectly posed, and it, that's not a red heifer? Uh, I, I, th I mean, this, this looks kind of red right here. His face, if you like squint and look at it, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't appear to, <laughs> it doesn't appear to be one of the red heifers to me either. Um, the traditional site of the ritual, the Mount of Olives is seen in the background on the other side of Al-Aqsa Mosque, suggesting the practice run was performed within the old city. The chief rabbinate in Jerusalem uh, has also since 1921 officially banned Jews from entering the Temple Mount. Uh, it ruled that Jews are forbidden to enter the site unless, quote-unquote, ritually clean, which is impossible with, without the ashes of red heifer. Now, about that, um, it seems to me, based on what I've, I've read from Israel 365 News, that there's more and more Jews that are ascending the Temple Mount. And uh, they they view it, and, and there's many other Jews that view it as a good thing. So there's like a debate about, as a Jew, should you go up to the Temple Mount? Because you don't know exactly the areas um, that would have been off limits to someone who's not, who has not been purified, right? Um, because the temple's not there anymore. So you may accidentally enter an area where you would uh, need to be richly clean. So... There's debate, but despite the debate, uh, there are more and more people that are going up there, like record-breaking numbers of people. We've covered that on the channel before. It's been a while, but it, it's been happening. Um, over the past century, religious Zionist groups, including the Temple Institute, have ad advocated for the return of Jewish prayer at Al-Aqsa, or Al-Aqsa, with some even advocating the demolition, the demolition of the mosque and the re reconstruction of the temple. Um, my goodness. And, uh, that kind of leads me to the next thing. I got a email from Graciela Herrera. Prayers on Temple Mount is the subject line, subject line. And in the email, hi Jared, I found this news article about practice of prayers on the Temple Mountain. If I get right, was a high level authority in Israel. Well, hopefully this will be interesting for you. Thanks for all your work. I really enjoy your YouTube channel. We know the second coming is near, but is nice to have uh, your re your reminder. Thanks again. Thank you, Graciela. And uh, yeah, I feel like things like this are, are definitely a sign of the times. Uh, the Jews are really, really, really getting anxious about, I mean, I'm not talking about all of Judaism. I'm talking about like religious Jews. And even within those that are religious, not everybody has the same opinion or approach, but there is a certain segment that is getting very, very excited. And just like this reenactment of the the uh, red heifer ritual, I've never seen that before. I've never seen this before, what they're doing here. They're doing these, these uh, very obvious prayers where they're getting down on the ground. And uh, I've been watching 
I've been watching Israel. Uh, frankly, I've been watching Israel since I was like 12 years old because I've always had an interest in the news, even from a very early age. When I was in junior high, I really started getting interested in the news. So I've always kept an eye on Israel and even more so since I started this channel. And I have not seen this so far. This is a new development. Now, there have been people that have been like uh, discreetly praying on the Temple Mount, um, just like quietly uh, or, or whatever. Uh, there's also been a lot of people that have done things that they, they know that they weren't allowed to do, like take Israeli flags to the Temple Mount or... Um, do other things. One one of the one of the first videos that I did on my channel was there's this uh, Levite named uh, uh, I think his name is Yair Levi, if I remember right. He has a YouTube channel, and uh, when he was on one of these tours, he sung on the Temple Mount, and there were a couple articles that came out that said that this was the first time in two thousand years that a Levite had sung a song on the Temple Mount. So there's already been a lot of things, but this is probably the most, uh, from what I've seen, this is probably the most provocative uh, that I've seen so far. Uh, this is just like, this is just blatant at this point. I'm not saying that I like support this. I, I think that we should respect the laws of any nation that we live in, but these, these are Jews. They're not members of the church. So um, let's just read what this post says. This is from Josh Brainer or Briner. These days, we are witnessing the real collapse of the police, the stage where senior commanders in the organization are afraid to uphold the law in order to flatter Ben Gavir. Yeah, we'll talk about Ben Gavir in a minute. Of course, some of you already know who he is. A house next door, for example, uh, there are no arrests and there are no, there, <coughs> sorry, there are not because they were afraid of Ben Gavir. And now the Temple Mount, uh, there are mass increases in contrast, sorry, this is like a translation from the Hebrew up here, so that's why it's kind of probably worded a little bit funny. Um, let's see. It's just the police are not really working to fulfill their duties because acting district commander Amir Arzani wants to get the rank of superintendent. And underneath it, the police understand it, so they turn a blind eye, um, act as if everything is eye contact. Ben Gavir, by the way, is at the entrance inspecting closely the police have no basic courage to uphold the law okay so this, you know it's this person's um opinion but yeah it, do, it does it does stir the pot it does for sure okay so ben Gavir scorns prime minister's objections as jews seen praying on temple mount it's my policy says ben Gavir. uh ben Gavir. He's part of the Netanyahu government. It's this guy right here. He's a very controversial figure. Um, he does a lot of provo he says and does a lot of provocative things, uh, including every time he's come to the Temple Mount, and he's this isn't the first time he's done it. There's always an uproar. And uh, let's just read some of this uh, because I think this is noteworthy. National Security Minister Itamar Ben Kavir. On Tuesday, dismissed Prime, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's insistence that Jewish prayer on the Temple Mount remain prohibited, repeating that it was his policy to allow the practice and eliciting outrage from Arab leaders as well as members of his own coalition. The uproar began as Ben Gavir visited the Temple Mount on Tuesday morning uh, to mark the solemn Jewish fast day of Tisha B'Av, which mourns the destruction of the temples that once stood in Judaism's holiest site. Some of the Jewish visitors were filmed praying and prostrating themselves in violation of police instructions. While Jews are not officially allowed to pray, police have increasingly tolerated limited quiet prayer in recent years. But Tuesday's prayers were far more explicit, with numerous men flattening themselves on the ground and loud shouts of Shema Yisrael heard in videos from the scene. Uh, Ben Gavir, who was joined at the site by fellow Otzma Yehudit minister Yitzhak Wasserlauf, uh, filmed a video at the scene saying over background calls of Shema, quote, there is great progress here on matters of Israeli sovereignty and rule in images of Jews praying here 
As I've said, our policy is to allow prayer. So I I take note of this, obviously, because this is probably going to, as more and more stuff like this happens, it's going to exacerbate tensions in uh, Israel and in the region. It's like a sign, just a small sign, but it's a sign that things are coming to a head, I feel like. And we're we're still waiting for this attack from Iran. It, it, from everything that I've seen, it seems like it's still going to happen. But th- things have never been like this <laughs> in Israel before. I, again, we, I've never seen a reenactment of the Red Heifer, ever. This is like a first that I know of. Um, as well as some of these things that I have on the spreadsheet. Some of these are a first. The Temple Institute was um, established in 1987. So that was after I was already born. And you've had all these developments over the past, like, you know, uh, about 40 years or so. A lot of them are first. And in the, the list just keeps <clears throat> building up. Uh, th- there's more and more that just keeps getting added to this list. So anyway, uh, continuing, uh, it was the third time the police minister had came or had made such a claim while visiting the Mount with the prime minister's office being repeatedly forced to issue denials that this was Israel's policy, but police did not appear to take any action to stop the prayers in the videos on Tuesday. Yeah, not in this video. It doesn't look like it. Religious journalist Arnon Segal, uh, has ebullient was ebullient writing on X, quote, the Temple Mount is ours, a historic and dramatic day, prostrations, loud singing, and prayer in the presence of ministers, dot, 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 a dream come true, end quote. Ben Gavir brushed off the reprimand, doubling down on his assertion. Yeah. Okay, so, again, uh, as members of the church, we believe in respecting the law and uh, obeying the law of the land. And, you know, this is them and they, they can do them, but this is not something that we should do ourselves. Like if we had like some kind of similar thing, uh, this wouldn't be right. The church doesn't operate in this way. Um, I'm not trying to say like that they're bad or anything like that, but it's just, I just want to know, it's like, I'm not condoning this at all but i'm just taking note of what's happening very interesting things but anyway that's gonna be it for this one so if you haven't already please make sure to subscribe like this video if you liked it leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below also make sure to share it and i'll talk to you guys later